these higher powers is the noble chief, Sabi Indigenous. Now, in this in this episode, in this segment, we're gonna start off. It's called the community of self. And I wrote out a bill called the Twelve Vibes of Self. And just like the rest of my bills, I'm just I just wrote out twelve keys. You know what I'm saying? Just to spark. To make a spark in my mind, to send a spark to your mind. Now, the first key, what is self? Self is the self is the ego. Right? It's that sense of oneness. It's that sense of isness. That sense of I. The singularity point which resides in all of us. The part of us that we feel is all alone in the world. But in all actuality, self is dual in nature. Self is triune in nature. And self is infinite. See, self is the science of everything in life. That's an acronym. Now, when we're first born, when we're first born, first born out of our mother's womb. See, and then before I go on, I got to state that that's really a misnomer. That's not when we're born. See, the process of being born is the activation that the sperm does with the egg. Once that, once your sperm cell penetrated your mother's egg, you were born. You were activated. You were activated. That's why I'm against abortion. That's why I'm against abortion because that's already a life. It's already activated. Now, the second point is self-identification. So, when we're first born, we're given we're given a name. That's why they call it your given name. We're given a name. Let's use myself for example. My mother called me Alan. Now, all through our lives, we are given names by other people. We choose other names. We call them what? Nicknames. Nicknames. The cops like to call them aliases. Now, self-identification comes when someone has right knowledge and they have already embarked on their journey of soul searching. If you haven't checked out the soul searching video, you should you should check it out. I mean the podcast. Sorry, sorry. I'm thinking I'm still on YouTube. The uh the soul searching um podcast. Check it out. Now, self identification comes after the soul well, during the soul searching process. When one embarks on soul searching. We automatically seek to redefine self. See, in order to self-identify, we must first redefine ourself. Now, during the process of self-identification, we naturally kill off a certain part of ourselves. The, are you with me how your powers like self identification is the rebellious nature inside of a human we all like to not be ran by people we don't like people telling us what to do we don't like people running us we don't like people controlling us we don't like people calling us names Matter of fact, when people use certain names and call us out of our name, notice they say out of our name. When people call us out of our name, they use what we call bad words, vulgar words. 
the B word, the H word, W word, etc., etc., etc. I cuss, by the way, but you know, just for the just for the sake of the build, I won't. Now, point three is self alienation. Now, that's I know that's a tongue twister. Self alienation. Y'all probably like Chief Sabi. Why? Why will we alienate ourselves? Because that self, remember I said the self is the ego. So this this construct that we call self, that isness, that I-ness, that me, that selfishness, we must alienate from that. We must separate ourselves from that. Yes, we are unique individuals, but as unique individuals, we also are naturally multi-planetary, multi-dimensional, multi-spiritual, multi-minded individuals. Now, my podcast is actually called Psychology with Chief Say Before Reason. Because we were colonized over here in the Americas. We were colonized over there in the East and in the Eastern uh, Hemisphere. We were colonized in the Western Hemisphere. But it wasn't the body. It wasn't just the land. It was the mind of the people. So therefore, any master teacher, anyone presenting right knowledge and right guidance must first restore the psyche of the people, of an individual. It's a process that I had to go through. See, on my journey of soul searching, there were many times where I thought, hey, I got all the right knowledge. Only a fool thinks that he knows everything. Only a fool thinks that um, a certain piece of information is complete. Only a fool would dare think that they have all the answers. And that is a major part of ego. That is a major part of selfishness. That is a major part of narcissism. Now, why do we self-alienate? We're still on the point of self-alienation. We self-alienate to step outside of the normal means of life or the normal walk or spectrum of life, the normal dimension, it's necessary because we naturally are dual in nature, triune triune in nature, and infinite in nature. We're dual in nature, being higher and lower self. We're triune in nature, being the soul, the spirit, and the flesh. We're um, quad, which is four. We're quad in nature, adding along the mind. Do you get what I'm saying? And then you got to look at it. We also have the spiritual bodies, the energetic body, the, um, the, um, the different chambers inside of our mind. I know you all are familiar with the fact that nine, over 90% of individuals only use about 10% of their brains. We use less than 10% of our brains because it hasn't been activated. Now, I, t- I, I spoke on it a little bit earlier. How to, I speak on it all the time how the crown virus is actually a genetic activation process. It is a genetic evolutionary process. See, if you look through history, every... 100 years in in between but every 100 years there is a great plague there is a great virus a great epidemic a great pandemic those things happen naturally because nature has to restore itself nature hits its reset button Are you with me, higher powers? 
Now, the um, fourth point is self hate. Remember, this is this build is called the twelve vibes of self. So we're gonna call the fourth vibe is self hate. How many of us experience self hate? How many of us acknowledge that we experience self hate? And how many of us really don't know that we have self hatred? The reason why I ask those questions is because self-hate brings on it. Wait, first of all, hate is an emotion. Be on the lookout for my emotional build. Matter of fact, I already have one up on my channel and I'll repost it here because it was a podcast. Hate is an emotion. It is the weakest of all emotions, yet the strongest. Remember, weak, strong are opposites, but yet they are one and the same. You notice that in the King Arthur story where he couldn't, no one could get the, the sword out the stone, Excalibur. No one could get Excalibur out of the stone, but King Arthur used his index finger and his thumb and barely pulled on it and it came out. Yet the strongest man was supposed to have Excalibur. Think on that higher powers. Um, now, hate and all other weak emotions are of the lower self. Sometimes love can even be of the lower self. And sometimes hate can be of the higher self. When dealing with emotions, you have to know that the emotions are actually energy in motion. And that's all I'm going to give you on emotions. I'm going I'm to stick to the bill. We're on the 12 vibes of self right now. And self-hate. When I say self-hate, I mean, how many times have you looked in the mirror and said, I don't like my appearance? How many times have someone made you uncomfortable to be yourself how many times have you been uncomfortable to be yourself and therefore you behave or act or copycat or reflect someone else's behavior therefore to seem more appeasing to them see when you love yourself you won't change yourself for anybody See, a lot of people don't acknowledge that they have self-hate. Why? Because they don't even realize that they hate themselves. Now, I love my sisters. When I say my sisters, I mean all the beautiful women in the world. Every spectrum of color. There is no color line at the LFTOM culture. There is no color line. We see past the color line. We look more into intellect and genetics. So when I say my sisters, I mean all the women, all six billion some odd women in the world. Beautiful creatures. But right now I want to focus on my sisters or the ones who look more like my mother and my blood sisters. My birth family. And that would be the copper color individuals of the wilderness of North America, North, South, Central, and the islands. Now, our women wear unnatural hair. They don't love their hair. They say things like, I need a perm. I can't wear my natural hair. Have you seen my hair? I don't want you to see my hair. I can't take a picture like this. I can't go anywhere like this. My hair, my hair, my nails, my nails. Oh, my feet are ugly. But they're not talking about their feet. They're talking about the nails. The nails are just dead cells coming out of you. If you knew what your nails were, you would know that the color of your nails and... The color of your nails and the texture of your nails are reflections of your health. Not only of your physical health, but of your mental health. 
But they won't tell you that. Master Chief Sabi will. Now. See. Over the years I've reflected on. Why my sisters wear weave. Why do the beautiful black women. With their illustrious hair. With their beautiful hair. Why do they cover it up. I pondered on the fact. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, it's some kind of activation or 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 memory of the ancestral DNA or just women's intuition that their hair is supposed to be covered. Because in all actuality, when you're wearing your weave, when you have your false hair or when you're when you're covering your hair up, you're doing the same thing the Muslim women do. You're doing the same through thing the Hebrew Israelite women do. You're doing the same thing that other cultures do. But yet, instead of just covering your hair with a beautiful wrap or turban or etc. You put someone else's hair. You put synthetic hair in your, in your head. Why? Why, sisters? Why? Because I'll tell you why. See, this culture that we're living, right? Remember I say, this culture that I'm bringing is a necessity. Because it's going to help stimulate the psyche of our women, men, and children. Because if I can build up strong men and women, therefore I'm building up the next generation and the next generation and so on and so forth into infinity. Nine times out of ten, if you ask a black man whether he likes your natural hair or your weave, he's going to respond that he likes your natural hair. But because of this culture that we live in, our women are forced to be more Europeanized. We are forced to, our women are forced to develop an inferiority complex and a low self-esteem because of their natural woolly hair. They're naturally, they're naturally curly or coily or nappy hair. Now, so do the men. See, our men are worse than the women sometimes. Our men are worse than the women sometimes. We pay $50 for haircuts, $30 for haircuts. Some people spend more than that. For what? If you knew what your hair was, you would never cut it. If you knew what your hair was, you would protect it. You would take care of it. You would grow it. Because you know that your hair stimulates life and matter. Your hair is really antennas. Brothers and sisters, your hair is antennas. That's where your strength and your power come from. That's where you resonate with the great soul. That's where you get your high vibrations and your high frequencies in through your hair. Straight from the soul. Now, on the opposite of self-hate is self-love. The only way to conquer self-hate is to embrace self-love. No one else can love you more than you love yourself. 90% of people do not love themselves. Why? Because they don't know how to alienate themselves from the ego. When you're just functioning in the ego, which is the lower self, which is the selfishness of a person, you can't ponder the fact that you look good or that Your natural genetics make you supreme or your natural genetics make you different or beautiful or handsome or exotic. No, we look at everything bad about ourselves. We never look at the good because the ego wants, the ego strive is for, for perfection. The ego strives to be perfect. 
But the higher self knows that the body, the body and the hair are only temporary. When you're functioning in the higher self, when you go through that process of self-alienation and you go through that process of soul searching and you go through that process of social distancing and quiet reflection, you'll realize that your body is only a vessel. You'll realize that You'll realize a lot. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to get off topic. But you'll generate self-love. See, one way to, to know, right? One way to know if someone really loves you. Or if someone really finds you attractive. Or if someone really likes you. Likes your vessel, likes your mind, likes the parts of you that nobody can see or even appreciates those parts or even acknowledges those parts that they can't see is to stop wearing designer clothes, to stop buying designer sneakers, to dress down, to let your natural hair grow wild. For the men, do the Wolfman Challenge for six months and see which women give you attention and you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. For the women, don't perm your hair. Matter of fact, matter of fact, if your hair is damaged from perms and your hair is damaged from chemicals, cut it off. And go through that process of growing because it'll humble you. Why do you think the monks and monasteries are all bald-headed? Why do you think a lot of nuns cut their hair off? Because it's a process of separating one's higher self from one's lower self. We pay too much attention to the body. When we should make we, we should pay more attention to the body. I mean, sorry, we pay more attention to the outside of the body when we should pay more attention to the inside of the body. Instead of changing one's hair, instead of changing one's nails, instead of buying all of these designer shoes and these designer clothes and these name brand things, we should change the way we eat. We should change the way we talk. We should change the way we treat each other. We should change the way we think. We should change the way we live. We should change the way we pursue happiness. We should change our perception of self. Why can't you love yourself in your natural state? Okay, now. The next vibe of self is parts of self. Now, I build, I touched on it a little bit. About the higher self and the lower self. The mind, the body, the soul, the spirit. I touched on the energetic bodies, the astral bodies, the the uh, the mental body, the solar body, the 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 inner. The, I touched on the fact that we're interplanetary beings, etc. But do you know there's more parts of self? Do you know that? Self is found inside the mind. Do you know that if you're living a life that you don't like, if you don't like yourself, that you don't have to die, you don't have to kill yourself, you can put yourself through, you can separate yourself because you have more parts. Think about it. And men will understand this, and women should too. I'm going to give an example. I'll use me as an example. I used to have a nickname. People used to call me Daryl. Little Daryl. It came off of the Ricky Smiley show. I don't know if y'all had Ricky Smiley in the morning. Wherever you from. But that's where my nickname came from. Because when I was younger. People considered me a bad kid. Or a rowdy kid. Or things of that nature. 
But it was a term of endearment that I embraced. I hope there's not an echo in here. I came inside. I usually record outside in nature, but the dog is barking too much. But there's different parts of self. Oh, yeah. Um, the example I was giving. Sorry. The example. I mean, pardon self. The example I was given was when I was in the streets thugging with my homeboys, being a crip, climbing the ranks from BG, from foot soldier to BG to YG to YOG to OG. Now I'm the head honcho. When I was doing, when I was in the streets doing that dirt, but yet when the street lights came on, and it was time to go inside, back into my comfort zone at that time, which was with my birth mother. I became Alan. I yes ma'am, no ma'am. If she told me to do something, I didn't say you can't tell me what to do. It's crip on mines. No, I did it. If she told me to clean up, I did it. If she whooped my ass, I bet not raise my hand back at her. Sorry for cussing. Pardon myself. I mean, excuse me. Do you get what I'm saying? That's two parts of self. But then you have that. Then you have that part of self. Then you have that part of self. That inside. That part that you keep safe, right? We all have a part of self that we keep safe. You may not name that part of self. It's the inner child. It's the it's it's the creativity point. It's your it's your muse. It's your what they like to call alter ego. Why do they call it alter ego? Because it's really your alter self. See, people who come upon the full self-realization and know they gather the right knowledge of multiple selves, they're given a diagnosis of multiple personality disorder. And that's because society, psychology, People who study doctors and people who study the the mental and the psyche of a person, they know that a person who acknowledges that there's more parts of self is dangerous. It's not only dangerous to themselves, it's dangerous to society, it's dangerous to other people, it's dangerous, dangerous to the very government. Why, you might ask. Because once you realize that you are more than just that part of you that was forced since birth to conform to a lack of identity, a lack of self-identity. Once you realize that and you identify yourself and you are able to safely. Now, remember, I say safely. I'm the only one. I'm the only master teacher I know of that ever has and ever and currently is teaching the proper and safe way to separate oneself from the part of self that you don't like. Creating, in a sense, a multiple personality disorder, yet in all actuality just creating what? That brings us to our next vibe or our point, which is the community of self. See, the community of self on the microcosm Starts right inside of your brain. When you acknowledge that to the streets. Okay, check this out. Anyone ever heard the Ply song? To these streets. I mean, what that nigga say? To these streets. I'm a thug, but to my mama, I'm still a baby. Y'all know what song I'm talking about. He's acknowledging that to the streets, he's a gangster. Just like I acknowledge to the streets, I'm a gangster. To the streets, I'm a drug dealer. To the streets, I'm a thug. To the streets, I'm a killer. To the streets, I'm a bandit. To the streets, I'm a nuisance. But yet, to my mother, I'm still her baby. I'm still her Alan. I'm still the one that she carried in her womb for nine months. I'm still the one that she prayed over and for. 
and still praise over and for now to this day. Because no matter what point of consciousness or awakening or self-realization I'm at, I will always be her baby. Do you, are you are you with me, higher powers? I will always be my mother's baby. Now, that community itself starts on the micro inside, inside of you, inside of you. And on the macro, the community itself is the awakened beings, the other high consciousness, the other higher powers. The other master teachers. See. The ego. Has to be killed. Especially in conscious individuals. And the reason why. Is because. For example myself for example. If I hadn't. Started the process. Of quelling. Or killing. Or suppressing the ego. I would. Develop narcissistic traits. And 99% of conscious individuals, woke individuals, so-called gods, so-called master teachers, so-called master students, so-called enlightened ones, so-called solar beings, develop egomaniac, egomaniacal they become egomaniacs and they get, they be they gain egotistical ways Why is that dangerous? It's dangerous because we miss out on enlightenment. Because when the ego is not properly quelled or suppressed or killed in its entirety. Or at least immensely suppressed. We think we're better than other people. We look down on other people. We miss out on knowledge. We miss out on opportunity. We miss out on enlightenment. Be on the lookout for my build that's going to be called opening and closing oneself. Or some kind of title like that. I forget the title. Now, those who have not quelled the ego cannot naturally create a community of self within themselves. Nor manifest it and reflect it. With other higher powers or higher consciousness. Or even join that collective consciousness. Maybe through the left handed path but not through the right. Not through the right. Not with right knowledge and right guidance. Because you won't open yourself up to be guided rightly. To receive right knowledge. See every fool. Every fool that thinks he's such a wise man and he has such knowledge and he has all the knowledge in the world and no one can teach them. But yet they secretly scroll the Internet and are influenced by governmental sources. But they call it right knowledge because if it comes from a European psychologist versus a black psychologist or if it comes from a, a, a African or Arab or any kind of Eastern traditional higher consciousness is better than a Western higher consciousness. Like you'll go get the information from anybody anywhere except someone who looks like yourself that you won't do. Oh no. And therefore, you'll never be admitted into the community of self. Not within yourself or within the grand body. Because the ego is not allowed. 
Everyone in the community knows that they do still have the ego, that they do still have that oneness, that isness, but they open up and allow themselves to be a part and parcel and partial in a piece of a greater mass, a greater community of self. Now, when you can properly separate the different parts of yourself and treat them equally and yet bring out the better qualities of yourself while suppressing the qualities which you do not like, your insecurities, your lower self, all the things that that entails. When you can do that, you are truly a member of the community of self. Not just within yourself, but with other higher consciousness and like-minded individuals. And therefore, they will be drawn to you. See, the importance of the community of self, the grand body, is the fact that when you truly awaken, when you truly are woke, when you truly are striving and soul searching, do you know that you become a flame? And what is one of the most ugliest creatures in the world that are drawn to flames? Moths. And what do you see the moth as? It's usually gray. It's a butterfly devoid of color. People don't realize that moths and butterflies are the same creature. And yet one is devoid of all color and one is beautiful to the sight. One is mischievous and of the lower self and one is of the higher self. And it's beautiful and people even say that those are spirits coming back. But those who are rightly guided know that the spirit of man can never go inside of an animal. The spirit of man can never be reincarnated into a bug, into an animal, into an insect, into a lesser being. Do you not know that man... And when I say man, I mean man, woman, and child, but especially the child. But do you not know that mankind is the most highest power here on earth? By not killing the ego, we allow ourselves to be ruled by shaitan. Now, I know people, that may scare people, right? Because they're so scared of spookism. But do you not know the brother is speaking literal? I'm speaking literal. We're speaking literal here. Shaitan is a real being. Shaitan means what? Thing of clay. That means lower self. Shay means thing. Tan means clay. Shaitan means thing of clay. Shaitan is the word that derives Satan. That Satan derives from. Are you with me, higher powers? When we're functioning in the lower self, we are the embodiment of Shaitan because we do everything that we can to hurt ourselves, to change ourselves in the wrong ways, to change ourselves to, to be molded by someone else, someone other than self. Now, once you quell that ego, you become a flame. You become a flame within yourself and moths are drawn to you. Moths are drawn to you. Because it's in the night where a flame shows brightest. In the night a flame shows brightest. And if I had to use a simultude, if I had to use a simultude or a simulcrum, I would say that Moths would be narcissists. The flame would be an empath. And yet butterflies are also empaths. In symbolism only. Butterflies come out during the day. And they interact with other butterflies. They interact with humans. Matter of fact, if you watch the butterflies, you watch all creatures. But if you watch the butterflies, you'll know the right knowledge that butterflies actually fly in packs. When you see butterflies off to their self, that's one that has lost his way. But yet he's still full of light. But yet 
when he's not within that community itself, because they do have a hive mind also. When he's not with his community, he's he's more he's more prone to being injured, to being hurt. And you know once a butterfly is hurt, it's dead. How can a beautiful creature like that crawl on the ground with ants, with spiders, with snakes, with humans? See, humans have a lack of understanding for life. Humans have a lack of appreciation for life. Humans kill anything except themselves. Not the physical death, not suicide, but we kill everything but the ego. We kill everything but that lower self. Matter of fact, we embrace the ego and we embrace the lower self. Now, what is the what is the point? Like, what is what is the point? What is the point of even acknowledging the higher and lower self, acknowledging the different parts of self, acknowledging that there is right knowledge and right guidance to be gained? And that brings me to the next point, which would be. Come. Unite self. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That that's vibe number eight. Vibe number eight would be come unite self. When I say come, I'm not saying come to me. No, don't come to me until you've came to yourself. I want you to come inside of yourself. Draw yourself in and battle. Higher versus lower. Higher versus lower. Start a war within self. Say, I'm, I'm going to love myself. I'm not going to hate myself. I'm going to appreciate and embrace my self-image. I'm not going to hate it. I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to conform how I look or how I see myself or my self-worth, my self-beauty for another person. No, embrace that. Embrace it. Come. Come unite self. After you've done that, you will naturally, you will naturally want to want to unite yourself with higher powers, with other brothers and sisters who are, are rightly guided and have right knowledge, right wisdom, right inner and over and understanding of all things. Because self is the science of everything in life, not some things in life. Sci- Self is the science of everything in life. In the appreciation, in the protection, in the love thereof. Now, after you've united, united yourself in the inside, after you came and united self, and the reason why I wrote it like come unite self is because I am you. You are me. Self is one, yet self is what? Infinite. There is a higher consciousness. There is a multiverse. There is a universe. There is different planes. There is interplanetary beings, which we are. There is interdimensional beings, which we are. We do phase throughout throughout the different cells. Sometimes wittingly and knowingly and sometimes not. Now, when you come unite self in the inside, you'll naturally want to come unite self on the outside. You'll want to reflect light on people who reflect the same kind of light you do. Who are those people? They are the like-minded individuals. Like-minded individuals. Like means similar. Minded means higher mind, that they are conscious. 
That means they've been minded, not like minded individuals, but like minded, denoting a process or a continuation of the mind or an activated mind. The ED um, denotes the activation of the mind. So we say similar, higher consciousness, and then individuals is. The inner divine dual nature. So like-minded individuals is similar, conscious, individuals. And individuals would be, would be broke down as inner divine Dual nature. Dual nature. Remember, I brushed up on this in the soul, in the soul searching um build. Now. Pardon self. <coughs> now. Like minded individuals. See, a pair of lips can say anything. But higher powers, we are empaths naturally. The copper in your in your skin, the copper in your blood activates your empathetic nature. Once you come in contact with an empath in the physical, spiritual, and the mental, just off the tones and vibrations of another empath will naturally activate. That empathetic nature inside of you. You could be the most wickedest person in the world. You could disagree all you want. But yet, my vibrations will change your frequency. My tones, my vibes, my my energy will change your frequency. Whether you admit it to self or not. And it, it would be egotistical of me to berate you and beat on you. And to, to beat on your mind and to, to forcefully... Make you submit. No, 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 no. All I can do is pass on the right knowledge, pass on the right vibrations, pass on the right guidance. And then humbly step away, not seeking acknowledgement. This is what we all supposed to do. This is what any master teacher does. Not seeking acknowledgement, not seeking gratitude or not seeking some kind of reward for passing on good vibes, higher consciousness or activating someone's um inner self or inner divinity no what i do is activate you and move on activate a person and move on once you're activated you can never be unactivated again you'll never go inactive this ain't messenger you're always active once you came in contact with the most higher power all praises be to the most high Now, the science of self. The next vibe of self would be the science of self. And that's what this whole build, these, all these vibes were pertaining to. The science of self, which is the science of everything in life. Science is about breaking down things to their least possible denominator, inspecting them, seeing the source, seeing where it comes from, and seeing the methods, and et cetera, and et cetera, et cetera. That's not an actual um, definition you can go find in a book. That's my definition because that's what it's about. When you, read, when you can redefine yourself, you start redefining words. You start redefining concepts. You start redefining your perception, your mental, your mind. Your body, your soul, your spirit, it's a refinery, a refinery. I talked about it in the solar, the, the soul searching bill, which I call the solar bills. Those are my solar bills. These are the self bills. We have all different kind of bills. But this is the science of self. The next vibe would be destroying the self. Ooh, they like Chief Sabi. You didn't talk 50 minutes, Chief Sabi, about the importance of self and et cetera. But remember how we started it off. Rewind it if you don't re remember. 
we started off saying that the self is the ego and the ego is the root and cause of all lower emotions and all lower characteristics of mankind and that is the self you got to destroy yourself but notice I put destroying yourself after we learned about self after we learned about self identification after we learned about self alienation after we learned about self hate self self love parts of self community of self come unite self like minded individuals in the science of self now you must destroy yourself but yet you don't destroy self on your own see I almost faced oblivion I almost literally faced oblivion destroying self only the most high could have saved me. Like only the most high. The most higher power. We are all higher powers, but the most higher power. That creator, that that energy that we have inside ourselves. You can say you don't believe in God. You can say you don't believe in anything. You do know that you have a higher and lower self. You do know you have a mind. You do know you have a spirit. And therefore, you do know that that came from somewhere. Let's say that we evolved from monkeys. That's cool. But sometimes, somewhere, a higher consciousness, a higher self, a higher power activated our consciousness. Because we are not animals. We are not unthinking things. We are not unreasoning things. Matter of fact, we are the opposite. We are thinking beings. We are reasoning beings. We have free will. See, animals are ruled by the lower self. Animals are the physical embodiment of the lower self. Because all they need to survive is the five basic things of life. The five basic things, which is air, water, food, sleep, and uh, air, water, food, sleep, and shelter. That's all animals need. And then they have the self-preservation, which is sex, which is a lower self, which is a lower, lower incarnation. See, sex is a beautiful thing. Sex is a beautiful thing when it's used towards procreation, when it's used in that in that unity between man and wife. Self is a sex is a beautiful thing. After you've destroyed the self. See, once you embrace the community of self inside of you, Inside of you, that's just the acknowledgement of the bad parts and the good parts. And then once you embrace the, the grand body of the community itself, which in its present day manifestation is the LFTOM, culture. <coughs> Pardon yourself. Once you embrace that LFTOM culture, once you embrace that community itself with inside yourself, now you are in a safe place to start destroying that ego, destroying and quelling and suppressing that lower self. But remember, it's a part of you. The ego is a part of you, and that brings us to the last vibe, the very last vibe or point. To the science of self built is to this community of self science of self built is the reincarnation of self. So when we kill the ego, we're gonna bring the ego back. When we kill that swine mind, we're gonna bring the mind back. When we kill that lower self, we're gonna bring it, we're gonna replace it with the higher self. And we're gonna even treat the lower self better. We're not going to treat the lower self like a stepkid. When we reincarnate ourselves, mind, body, and spirit, and we kill that ego and then reincarnate it under our rules. See, right now we are ruled by the ego. That's why the ego must die. We are ruled by the ego. So it must die. Are you with me, higher powers? Anyway, I love you all. It's much peace. This is Master Chief Sabi, fearless leader of the Lost and Found Mud Tribe. LFTOM, the Lost and Found Tribe of Mud.
be on the lookout for our podcast. We're gonna dwell on the mud trot, but you know it's 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 a members only thing. It doesn't mean that you have to stop. It doesn't mean that you can't still function in your own organization, that you can't function as a leader. Because like I say, and I'm going to keep saying it, only leaders, only leaders are welcome in the tribe. Only leaders are welcome in this culture because this is a culture of leaders. We're in our nature. Nature is the natural state of mind, body, soul, spirit. Humanity, the wilderness of North America, that's nature. And nature is natural. So all 2020, all 2021, 22, 23, 24, into infinity and beyond, we're pushing this nature. We're pushing this culture. We're pushing high science. We're killing the ego. We're bringing right guidance and right knowledge to the people for free. I love you all. I love you all. And therefore what? I love myself. I am you. You are me. We are one. Only like-minded individuals will get that. But just know that a real master teacher doesn't charge. That a real master teacher doesn't can't be Ruled by sex or any other lower emotions or ego or money, etc. I am you. I will die for you. But the tribe would rather me live for you. Anyone, anyone with any questions, feel free to inbox me on Messenger. Sabi Indigenous. That's my real name. On Instagram, Chief Savy. I am Chief Savy. On YouTube, comment under my videos. I am you Indian. Email me at the mud tribe at gmail.com. Get at me, higher powers. I love you all. I love myself. I love my culture. I love my tribe. And I will die for you all. But instead, I'm going to live for you all and die if necessary. Much love and peace, higher powers. I'm gone. Chief Sabi Indigenous, Hayoka, the noble, the realist, the chief. Higher, higher, higher power to infinity and beyond.